and 3.2. So it's not like that stuff isn't used, but just this, this quiz is going to focus on being able to select your factors, factoring fully, and then graphing. Okay, step one. Step one. Uh, you're going to identify the degree, the type of polynomial, and you're going to identify the leading coefficient and determine the end behavior. So that's all the stuff from 3.1, okay? Is it an even or odd function? And which way do my ends go? Are they, if it's an odd, is it positive leading coefficient? So it'd be 1 and 3. If it's even, or sorry, if it's a negative coefficient, it'll be 2 and 4, those sort of things. You have to find the x-intercepts next. So this stuff is just looking at it. This is a look. This is, you're just look, you're going to look at it and you're going to know these things. And yeah, you're going to have to commit it to memory or you're going to have to do funny dances to remember it. Um, but you will have to remember it. If you're not sure, you guys are really, really good at quadratics. Quadratics are just even functions. If you know your rules on quadratics, you know your rules on things with degrees of sixes or twenties. You guys are pretty good at linear. Linear was a long time ago. I just graphed a linear function with my grade nines today. Um, so if you know your rules for linear, you know all the rules for odd functions. So you know it, it's just whether or not you can pull that to the front of the brain and use it. Um, you need to find the x-intercepts. That's the stuff. So this is gonna be the factoring fully. Right, because we know when we have it in factored form, those factors turn into our x-intercepts. Factors turn into the x-intercepts. Okay, you need to remember your multiplicity rules. These are new. Okay? That's if you have something like... Like, let's say you had that graph. This has a multiplicity of 1 because there's one factor that's x minus 3. We know that the x-intercept will be at positive 3. Here, we have a multiplicity of 2 because there's two factors from the squared. And we know that the x-intercept will be at negative 2. But there's something that has to happen funky at this point. You're going to calculate the y-intercept. Super easy. What do we know when we're finding the y-intercept? We know x is equal to 0. Right? Straightforward calculation. You've been doing y-intercepts since... But here's the thing. People are like, oh, the y-intercept is 0. If it's given to you in factored form, it's not. You actually have to substitute it in. So we'd have 4 times a negative 3, and my y-intercept would be negative 12 on this particular graph. So just make sure you're doing the actual substitution. Okay, sign analysis between the zeros. I feel like we've done this before. Um, we're going to pick a test point in between the x-intercepts, and we're just going to decide whether the function, whether the y values, um, so whether your y values are positive or negative. That's all we're doing for sign analysis. It's really quite easy. Um, okay, multiplicity. You guys good with that? I'm like going really fast. I don't know why. I'm sorry. I can take a breath. Uh, what's the zero of a function? It's an x-intercept. So when I say multiplicity of a zero, I'm not talking about the number. I'm talking about x-intercepts. Okay, so when I'm talking about multiplicity, I'm just talking about how many times that actually occurs. I'm just going to slide up here. So how many times does the x-intercept of negative 2 occur? Twice. In, twice. Because it's squared, right? It's going to happen twice. Because that's the same thing as saying x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 3 equals y, right? So we have 2 x minus 2 x-intercepts. All right. If I could just continue, 
I can tell you. All right, different things will happen. So if you have multiple x-intercepts at the same spot, it will result in different things. Okay, so here we go. If you have an x-intercept with a multiplicity of one, so that means you only have one of them, you've got one x-intercept, it cuts the x-axis. This is what we've done our whole career so far. We're like, oh, here's the x-intercept, we connect right through it and we keep going. So it's a cut, it cuts right through it. If you have a multiplicity of two, it bounces. So, bounce, ooh, I forgot an N in bounce. Let me try that again. Bounce, cut. So we cut right through. We cut right through that x-axis. If we have a multiplicity of two, we go down to x minus two in the one that I was showing you before. We hit it, and then we bounce right back up. We do not, we do not cut the x-axis. We do not cross it. We bounce. We bounce at that point, so we bounce back up. Or down, depending on where you're going. And if it's a multiplicity of three, it's called a drag. So what that means is you go through the point, but you kind of drag through it. And we saw that with our tan graph, that shape that kind of drags through the zero. Do you guys remember that across the x-axis? These happen a lot in cubic functions. So if my x-intercept is here, we're just dragging through it, and then we're, we're going to come, we're going to cut it, but it's like a drag through. So we've got a cut, a bounce, and a drag. It's not completely flat. Yes. So it's not like it, it goes along the x-axis. It will in your drawings, and you don't want it super long. It's like it just comes down and gets really, really close like an asymptote, and then it cuts through, and then it gets, stays really, really close, and then it starts to drop. So it's that drag through the point. It's a, like a cut goes right through. The bounce is pretty obvious. The drag takes a little while to get the feel of it, um, as you go, because you have to be very distinct between a drag and a cut. If I can't tell the difference, then I don't know if you understand multiplicity. Okay? So we're going to practice it. Cut, bounce, drag. Cut, you know. You've done this forever. <coughs> All right. Here we go. This is nice and easy. These questions are super nice and easy. Uh, for each one, what is the degree of this polynomial? How do we know the degree? X-intercepts. How many x-intercepts do we have? Three. Three. What's my degree? Three. Three. Good job, everybody. What is the sign of the leading coefficient? So is that positive or negative? It is positive. So that's the answer from 3.1. That one's positive because it's up in 1 and down in 3. X-intercepts. And up in 1 and down in 3. Where are the ends? Oh, in 1. Mm -hmm. So you're going to positive infinity in 1. That's why I say up in 1. And you're headed to negative infinity in 3, so down in 3. That's just the way I describe it. The end behavior for if you want to say it's in quadrants one and three, that is perfectly fine. I always do up in one, down in three, because I'm looking at limits of the function, which is something different, but it helps my brain. Okay, x-intercepts, and then I want you to turn them into factors. So where are my x-intercepts? Okay, so those would be my x-intercepts. You guys would all agree? Now I want you to change those into factors. So what would that one turn into? Right, so bracket x plus 4. This one would be x plus 2. And this one would be x minus 2. Okay, this one... Um, not hard. It's a domain statement. 
uh, but people don't think of it that way. So we're looking for the interval. So we're doing a domain statement. We're doing a domain statement about the interval where the function is positive or negative. So we're looking y values here. And if you are doing the calc half credit with me, we're going to get super specific in how high these <coughs> bumps go and how low these bumps go. So we're going to do that in calculus, not in pre-calc. Um, okay, so we're going to do an interval. We're going to do domain statements. So where are the y values positive? I'm going to use my handy dandy highlighter. Y values are positive on the hump. and that little arm there. I'm going to try to use a blue highlighter. I'm going to regret this decision. So orange, they're positive. So let's make some domain statements. I want to tell you that zero is always included in the positive. Okay, everybody? Zero is included in the positive. So we can do domain statements. We're going to use interval notation. So we are going to say... We're going to do the positive first. I always like to start with positive. So where is my furthest on the domain? Where's my furthest left positive point? Negative four. And it's inclusive of it because it's a zero of the function. What is, where does that go to? Where does that stop? Negative two. It's inclusive of negative two because zero is positive. Zero is positive. When you have to make a decision, zero always is positive. And where else is our graph positive? In unison with the positive two to infinity. Nice. Good job, Rahat. Okay. So I always do my positive first because I know they're all going to be square brackets because zero is included in them. So... That's, the y value is at zero. I know that zero is considered positive. So now my negative is going to be here. Oh, my blue is actually turned out pretty good. And here. Uh, I find highlighting it helps my brain. Some of you will just be able to see it, which is awesome. Um, and as we're learning this, I think highlighting is helpful, but it's all what works best for you. So we're looking at the furthest, most left-hand point that the graph on the x-axis has negative y values. Negative infinity. So round bracket around that. And where are we going to? Negative four, but exclusive this time. So a round bracket around it. Because where was the four included? Because the y value at that point is zero, and we always include zero with our positive. Y value is zero. It can't be included in both. It can't be both positive and negative. And zero, although we don't normally think of it as a positive number, it is a positive number. And then that's going to be in unison with negative two to positive two. To positive two. All round brackets on that because zeros are included in the positive. Remember that we're making a domain statement about something that's happening with the y's. We're making a domain statement about something that's happening with the range. Okay, so we're looking at the range, what's the range doing, but then we're saying it's on this interval on the x-axis. They'll still work. They function like a positive number. Yeah, yeah, Logan? Yeah, you can do like, if you needed four of them, keep going. Like if you have four different positive sections, 
just keep throwing that in unison in there and just break your graph down. So I have one highlighted section, two highlighted sections, so I should have two of them, but in some cases I might have four highlighted sections, right? Yep. I always start with my positive, so I'm consistent. It's like muscle memory. I try to do everything in the exact same way every time because then my brain kind of gets trained to keep moving exactly like that. So I know all my negatives are gonna be round brackets. Most of my positives will be square brackets with the exception of anything that ends in infinity. Okay, second graph. It's not hard, like it's not hard, but there's just tons to remember. I think that's the motto of this course. It's, it's not hard, but. What do you think of that? Hard to see. See what I did there? Just highlighting it a little bit bigger. We just had this conversation about zero being positive. So even though this part is positive, I still have to include that singular point. And it's not that big of a deal. Oh, I'm do I've jumped right into my intervals. I didn't answer the rest of the questions. So are you guys okay if we just keep going with the interval for right now and we'll go back and answer those questions in a sec? Thank you. So we have positive interval. We've got negative five to negative one inclusive in unison with It's just by himself. It's just by himself there. It's an x-intercept, so we, it, zero does classify as positive, so it has to be included in there. What? How many x-intercepts do you know happened at this point? Technically two, because there's a bounce. Upside down bounce, but you get it. Like, it's a bounce, it's not cutting it. So we know that there's two at that point, so we have to include that, that specific point that one singular point in the positive, but it bounced back down into the negative. So now, ah, throwing stuff around here. So now my negatives, okay, that's the very first time my blue highlighter's like ever shown up reasonably on a note. So we're going to have negative infinity to negative 5, round bracket, because negative 5 is included in the positive, in unison with negative 1 to 4, exclusive. And then I have one last set. In unison with 4, O oh, to infinity, you're right. Thanks, Steve. Yep, appreciate it. Domain statement there. I was looking at my whys. So this is like, this is exactly what you thought, Logan. You can have more than one U, like more than one U on that line. And you have to put the break here because four is included with the positive. You can't just, if you go from negative one to positive infinity, you're technically incorrect because there's one point in that section that belongs to the positive interval. Okay, uh, what's the degree? Nice. Degree of four. And what else do we know about this? We know both end behaviors are in the same direction, so we know it's gonna be an even function. So if you said one, two, three, you would expect your graph to be doing this or this, we know that both ends are going in the same direction, so we know that our, our, it has to be an even degree. Uh, leading coefficient, negative. X-intercepts, negative five, negative one, and four. So now we're gonna turn them into 
factors. So we're going to have x plus 5, x plus 1, x minus 4. But what do we know is happening at the x minus 4? Multiplicity of 2. We got two of them. You can write it out twice if you want. That would be 100% correct as well. But we're mathematicians, and we like to be efficient. And we know that that just means multiply it by itself. And what was the definition of, of who? Yeah. The highest exponent of the polynomial. Like, yeah, go ahead. How would, how would we do an uh, exponent for that? Well, you know, there's three. So you just do the point that it drags at, and then you do an exponent of three. Okay. Let's graph some stuff. Guess what? This one's given to you in factored form. What do you know about all these multiplicities? Cuts. They're ones. They're all cuts, right? They're just going to cross through like we've always done. What do you know about the leading coefficient of this? What do you know about that? It's positive. Because if I look at all these coefficients and multiply them, I'm going to have, there's no negative in the front of these binomials, so my leading coefficient will be positive. I know that this is a degree of 3. My leading coefficient is positive. So what does that mean for me? What does that tell me about my end behaviors? Quadrant 1 and 3, right? We're doing one of these. So that's what we should anticipate. Um, okay. We're going to do sign analysis. Oh, we need to find a y. Let's find our x-intercepts. Pretty straightforward. I think we can do that on our own. Um, let's find our y-intercept. What's our y-intercept? Y-intercept is negative 6. How did we do that so quickly? All we did was substitute zeros in here. So I'm taking negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2. Negative 2 times 3 is the negative 6. Okay? Uh, then we get... Oh. X-intercepts are happening at x equals 1, x equals negative 2, and x equals neg <laughs> negative 3. All right, now we are going to do sign analysis. So really what we're doing, I like to do it on a number line because it makes my brain happy. Uh, you guys will find a way that works best for you. I would encourage you to use a number line if possible. Um, if you don't like that, that is okie dokie as well. So negative 3 is going to be here, negative 2, and 1. It's not a very good number line, ladies and gentlemen, but it is my number line. Uh, so these are all my x values. These are all my x values. What I'm looking for is what's happening with my y values. Um, okay, what I want to do is I want to pick a test point that is less than negative 3. Can you guys give me an x value less than negative 3? Negative 4. I like it. So we're going to take when x is equal to negative 4, what's our y value? Got to do some math, folks. You got to do some math. If you substitute negative 4 in here, and really, ladies and gentlemen, all I'm looking for is not the exact number. I'm looking for whether your answer is positive or negative. So if I put negative 4 in here, what do I get? I get a negative. If I put negative 4 in here, what do I get? Also a negative. And if I put negative 4 in here, what do I get? Also a negative. If you times three negatives together, what do you get? Negative. So we know that when we choose a value less than negative 3, our y values 
will be negative. This is why it's called sign analysis, because you're looking at whether it's positive or negative, not what the actual point is. Because we're going to get a little bit, dare I say, lazy with these kind of graphs. We're not going to overthink it too much. Okay? Uh, point between negative 2 and negative 3. 2.5. Very good with that. So, negative 2.5. So, again, don't overthink it. Go back up to your factors. If I put negative 2.5 in here, is it going to be positive or negative? Negative. If I put negative 2.5 in here, is it going to be positive or negative? Negative. If I put negative 2.5 in here, what's it going to be? Positive. So we have a negative, negative, and a positive. If I multiply a negative, negative, and a positive together, what do I get? Positive. Okay, a value between negative 2 and 1. Pick the best one, everybody. Zero. And you guys did this already. You did it right here. You did it when x is equal to zero. It's negative. And now we get to pick a value greater than one. Two? We're going with two, everybody? Please say we're going with two. Okay. If I put two in here, is that binomial positive or negative? Positive. And if I put 2 in here, it's going to be positive. If I put 2 in here, it's going to be positive. If I multiply three positives together, I'm going to get a positive there. So remember, this tells us what the y values are doing. This is, when I say f of x, we know that can be replaced with y. So these are your y values. All right, so now we're going to graph this. Now we know all kinds of stuff. We know that it should end. This is telling us that we should end in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3, right? That's what that's telling us. We know we have a y-intercept of negative 6. We know where our x-intercepts are, and we know where y should be in between those x-intercepts. Okay, so let's graph. You got your increments on there? Am I holding you up? Bless you. All right. Okay. I want to do this in, I think I'll be okay. I think I'm going to graph this in, I'm going to graph this in pink. Can't stop me. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my x-intercepts on. That's going to help my brain. I'm going to put any of my intercepts on. So my x-intercepts, my y-intercepts. That's what I know. Uh, and you guys told me that they were all straight cuts. So I don't have to worry about bounces or drags or anything for this one. I'm just doing straight cuts. So I have a y-intercept at negative 6. This, does, this is not vibrant. Uh, I have an x-intercept at 1. I have an x-intercept at negative 2. And I have an x-intercept at negative 3. So I have all my intercepts on. And now what I'm trying to figure out is where does it, where does it go through? We know that anything less than negative 3 is going to be negative y values. And it doesn't really matter what order, but you gotta make your curves connected and kind of smooth. Um, so I'm gonna start from the left-hand side and I'm gonna work through it. I know, and I'm just gonna do this fakely. I don't know, I'm gonna fake out first. So I'm gonna be negative y values. When I get to negative three, I'm at zero. And then between negative three and negative two, I'm positive, so I'm coming up. And the question is, how far do I come up? That's a really good question, and I'll answer that in calculus. So right now, we're just coming up. You're going you're gonna to just take some creative genius here, and you're just going to 
Go up as far as you emotionally feel you need to. It will, but I'm going to teach that in calculus. It's not something we cover in pre-cal. So we're going to go up. We're positive. We come to negative two and we're back down to negative values. That makes sense. Where do I have to pass through? That negative six, you have to pass through there. This doesn't have to be your lowest point. Um, a lot of people go here and then they go right back up. There's nothing wrong with that. Just know that you don't have to do that. And then any values greater than one are up here. So here I go. Do, 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 do. We just graphed a polynomial function. Like I said, we're going to get a little lazy with these graphs because they're not going to have a table of values. Your sign analysis is going to take stuff. If that does not help your brain, if you are a person who needs coordinate pairs, and trust me, I, I feel your pain. If you want to do a table of values, it will work for this. But you, you just have to do a couple in each section to get that shape, okay? And our graphs will look different, but I'm looking for key points. I'm looking for the x-intercept, the y-intercept, making sure you're negative in the right place. We knew our endpoints should be quadrant one and three, so if yours don't end in quadrant one and three, you need to go back and check. Was there a bounce somewhere that I didn't pay attention to? All right. How do we feel? Okay? All right. I like when we feel okay. All right. What's my leading coefficient? Oh, better yet, what's my degree? Let's, let's keep going in order. What's my, what's my degree? Hopefully my degree is four. Everybody see how I got four? There's three of those and there's one of these, so I'd have three X's multiplied there, so my degree is four. What's my leading coefficient? Is it positive or negative? That thing sitting outside the bracket will make anything turn to negative, okay? So if these are all positive in here, x times x times x is x cubed, times x is x to the exponent 4. Those are all positive, but times by that negative 1, so we're going to have negative. So that tells me my end behavior is in quadrants... Three and four, we're down, down for a parabola, right? Um, where's my y-intercept? I'm getting my note. Um, I know that 3 cubed is how many? 27, right? And I got to times it by a negative 4. Oh, 27. A negative 108. Positive 108? Positive, positive 108. Because they're like, how do you expect me to graph 108? Did you guys see us lay many points down on here? Not a ton, right? Not a ton of points. Because um, this would be positive 27, negative 4, and then we've got that negative outside. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. X-intercepts, since I just drew above that and I can't write. X-intercepts, negative 3, positive 4. What do we know about our negative 3 one, though? What do we got going on there? We got a drag. I like to write that in to remind myself, just so um, it's so easy to miss, like, Oh yeah, it's negative three, positive four, I move on. And if I don't make myself a note, I'm just gonna do straight cuts and I won't get full marks for that. Okay, let's graph. I know you're super excited. What do we got going up by here? So I got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 
14. Ah. Okay, I think I'm going to go up by 10. That leaves me a ton of room. Why do you have to do it by 9? You want to go up by 9? Yeah, because then you got an exact point. You got an exact point? Yeah. Okay, I like it. At the 12th. At the 12th one. Look at you in here, Muff. Look at you. You've got all kinds of answers today. So this is going to be 18. This is going to be 36. Um... We can keep like we can keep adding 18 on there. Like that's not a problem. You can label them all, or you can skip right to the 12th one if you want. My brain always works better when I label them all. But I mean, it's really whatever you guys want. Is that good for everybody? So not nice numbers, but not terrible either. Uh, and then I'm just going to do this one, negative 18. And then I'm going to call it done. I just need to make increments enough that I can see them and know what you used and that they're consistent. Um, okay, that really bothers my brain. i got to put another one on there just because I want to. Uh, what about my x values? What am I going to go up by? Probably go up by ones on these ones, right? That'll be so one, two, three, four, five, negative one, oops, negative two, negative three, negative four. All right, we're gonna put on our points first. I always graph my oh we didn't do sign analysis. Let's let's do sign analysis first. I was just getting right into the graphing. So this one's nice. I have negative three and I have positive four. So I'm looking for the f of x values. So remember when I say f of x, I'm just looking for what the y is doing in between those points. Um, what do you guys anticipate uh, for things less than three? Hopefully it's gonna be negative because our graph should be ending in negative three, right? Should be down in negative three, or sorry, in quadrant three. Okay, so if I drop a negative in here, negative three plus three is? Zero. Good job, everybody. Oh, I need a value less than negative three. That's gonna give me a zero. Can we put negative four in there? So if I put negative four in here, I get a negative answer. A negative answer cubed is what? Negative. Still a negative. If I put negative four in here, I get, so this one's negative. This one's gonna be negative, but we also have that negative out front there as well. So what are my Y values? Negative. They're negatives. Uh, I'm gonna pick a value between negative three and positive four, pick a good one. Zero, do we already have the answer to that? Yeah, that's your Y intercept. So it's gonna be positive. Uh, pick a value greater than, so we'll pick Five. So if I put five in here, it's going to be positive. Positive cubed is still positive. If I put five in here, my answer is positive, but we still have that negative sign out front. So what's my answer going to be? Negative. And we should have anticipated that because we're down in quadrant four as well. Okay, now we can graph things. So First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my x-intercepts on. I like to try to keep consistent in putting all my intercepts on first. Okay. I don't know if I can drag backwards, but I'm going to try my best. We know at this x-intercept we have a drag. So, again, I'm starting over here. My y values less than 3 are going to be negative. So I'm going to come up to here, and then I'm going to drag through this point. So it's got to be kind of that. You've got to move through it at a slow pace. I'm going to try to do it backwards. When I talk about backwards, I usually go through it to 
to the left, and now I'm going to the right, so it's a little messed up, but you guys will forgive me if it doesn't look beautiful. See that? So it's like, it doesn't just go straight through. You've got that kind of swoop through that point. Still obvious where the x-intercept is, but you're kind of like slowing down through it. And what's happening at four? Am I just cutting at four? I need some arrows on this. There we go. So this x-intercept should look significantly different than this one. Looking at your graph, is that a true statement? Yeah? Right, it's like almost... My first day on drags, I'm not sure yet. So that's the thing, when you send me a graph, like if this were a question on a test, I need to see a difference between this x-intercept and that x-intercept. I'm not looking for perfection, I'm looking for that they are different. Okay, how do we feel about that? That's not terrible graphing, it's a little bit lazy. If I needed you to, we didn't label two points on each graph, which we should have, what points would you pick? X-intercepts, Y-intercept, right? Like, don't overthink this. Like, don't work harder than you need to. This isn't about getting exact. If you're coming to calculus, then I'm going to have some exact stuff for you to do. If you're not coming to calculus, you're missing a really good time. Okay. Those were given in factored form. Those were given in factored form. Guess what we have to do now? We get a factor. So, step one, what are we looking at? We're looking at the factors of negative four to figure out which one is a factor. That means it will have a remainder of zero. So, Why? Can you factor with a cube on there? Yeah. So that's going to be the difference here, right? I don't know where my charge cord went for my calculator. Um, okay, do you guys find a factor? Good try. It's going to be an awful long, it's going to be an awful long lesson if we don't have a factor. X minus one. So you substituted in the one value, right? So if you substitute in So that was the remainder lesson 3.2. So it's not like you're getting away from it. It's now just helping you with um, a more complicated, a more complicated one. Uh, anybody see anything about this polynomial that would help you in factoring? Uh, definitely the zero x squared for sure. If you wanted to common factor, you could, but you don't need to. You just may need to common factor later. You guys are like, I don't know what you're talking about. So maybe let's not talk about it. Let's do our synthetic division. You just told me, Anna Rude, to put my zero in there, and I almost missed it.
Ms. Chan, how do you know that X marks were Focus on the mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Does anybody see it now? When it's a quadratic, what you got to do before you factor? What are you going to take out? I mean, you could use a negative two times four, but I'm not sure why you would do that. Take out a, the negative two coefficient because all of them are divisible by two. So. Did I do that right? Oh no, I didn't do that right. I didn't factor out the last one. I just left it as a four. I changed the sign though. Do I get half marks for that? No. <laughs> you guys are cutthroat. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, this is much better. Can I factor this one? I hope so. What are the factors of negative two that add up to positive one? Positive two, negative one. So negative two, x plus two, x minus one. What are we missing? The x minus one from up top, right? So now you have your you have your equation in factored form. Okay, uh, what was the degree? I guess that would be helpful. The degree was three, the leading coefficient, negative. So from that, we know that it's going to be in quadrant two and quadrant four, right? So that, that's the reason why we do it, is just to remind us where our graph should be going. It helps if we make a mistake in sign analysis. And you see how easy it is to make just a transcription error or just a simple arithmetic error, like you miss something. Totally, we all make mistakes. Uh, I, you know what, if I did the provincial exam, I probably wouldn't get 100 on it because after writing for three hours, my brain is mush too. Like I don't, I think you guys are amazing people for being able to do it, but sometimes you're really hard on yourself. Um, so keep that in mind, like we're all not perfect. Uh, what's happening at this x-intercept? There's two of them. we got to bounce this time. So for my x-intercepts, I'm at negative 2 and I'm at positive 1. But at positive 1, I have a bounce. Um, and then I need my y-intercept. See, I'm not doing things in order, and I'm just all out of sorts. My y-intercept, and this is nice. When you get it like this, you get a lot of information. Yeah, we had to do some work for the x-intercepts, but you get a lot of information that's already done for you. And now we just have to do sign analysis, and we're golden. I'm going to do my zero right now. Just, I'm going to put that in. I'm going to put that in. You guys can't stop me. Can't stop me. I'm doing it. I know. I'm a wild child. All right. If I put negative three in, now you can do it one of two ways. You can substitute negative three into the original, or you can substitute the negative three into factored form. It really doesn't matter. You should get the exact same answer. My brain works a little bit better if I put it into here, but it really is totally up to yourself what you want to do. Because I know that that will be a negative number. A negative number cubed is a negative number times by a negative number is positive. So positive. Oh, maybe it is easier to put it in here. Maybe my brain works better this way because I'm multiplying. Okay, let's try this again. I'll get a negative. I'll get a negative. I'll get a negative. 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 Three negatives. And a negative. So where am I? 
positive. Okay, and that's what I anticipated because I should be in two. I should be in two. So this is going to be positive. Look at me. And now I'm going to pick two over here. So if I dump it into here, I'm going to have a positive, a positive, and a positive. But then I times all that by a negative. I don't know why I switched colors, but we're just going to have to roll with it. Okay. It's okay. We all have our things. Uh, okay, so... All right, so let us uh, do increments. I think we're okay with ones on everything this time. going to put my all my intercepts x and y so negative four a negative two and a positive one so we know that our y values are starting in the positive they're going to go down and we should be ending in four, and we anticipate a bounce. So we're going to come up to this point, we're going to hit it, and then we're going to come right back down. Okay? Okay, how do you feel about that? Not too terrible, but there's lots of parts to it. So you can anticipate that. I think we're going to stop for today. It just seems like a natural break. We still have a few examples to do, um, and we're just not going to get through them today. So good news. Quiz gets pushed off till Tuesday. Yay, you guys. Um, and we'll pick this up. We'll pick this up on...